Hey, this is Annie. And Samantha. And welcome to Stuff I Never Told You, a production of iHeartRadio. And today we are back with another feminist around the world. And we are going to the islands of Indonesia. And we are celebrating the works of Aman or the Alliance of Indigenous Peoples of Archipelago. Uh, Secretary General Ruka Sambalingi. Sambalingi is a member of the Tarajan Nation from the area of Sulawesi Island of Indonesia. And she is the first woman to serve as the Secretary General of Aman, which is the world's largest indigenous peoples organization. And she was elected to the position in 2017. And I believe she is currently still serving as the president. If someone wants to correct me, great. I just saw a 2023 YouTube video and stuff, and she was still (laughs) Secretary General. So someone can... Let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is correct. And just so you know, here's a quote from her about the organization from an article by culturalsurvival.org. Amman was established in 1999, shortly after the Suharto regime fell. But the movement in Indonesia started much earlier in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. As of today, our members are 2,366 indigenous communities. They're served by one headquarter in Jakarta, where I am. We have 21 provincial chapters and 120 local chapters working to serve our members in matters of discrimination. Amman has also established three women's organizations, the Indigenous Youth Front, dedicated to Indigenous women and youth, the Indigenous Women's Union, which was created for Indigenous women to have their collective struggle and collective voice together, and an association of lawyers defending the rights of Indigenous people. We also have education foundations for Indigenous schools, a cooperative union, a consulting company, and an ancestral domain registry where they are validating our indigenous maps. So the organization does a whole lot, has lots of members. Uh, When she was initially elected as the secretary general, the organization represented at least 17 million indigenous people. So I'm sure it's grown since then because that's been six years ago. I couldn't find any new numbers. But yes, that's who she is. (laughs) <laughs> right. And though she has been the head of the Amman for over six years now, her work spans decades, including what some would call the beginnings of the movements in Indonesia in 1993, which was hosted by her parents. With her master's degree in political science, Sambalingi has been organizing and leading the indigenous community. Uh, in fact, she had previously worked with J-A-P-H-A-M-A, uh, one of the main groups that had been a part of the initial groups that were a part of the Amman in 1999. She was also a part of the UNDP Regional Indigenous Peoples Program as a program specialist in the Asia Pacific Center in Bangkok. And in 2009 to 2012, She was a member of the Executive Council of Asia Indigenous Peoples, PACT, AIPP, as a representative of Malaysia, Philippines, Indonesia, and Timor-Leste. I hope I did not butcher that. And she was one of the main people who wrote the Indonesian chapter of the Indigenous World, which was a report by the International Work Group on Indigenous Affairs. Right. And I think that was worked on in Copenhagen. So it was a big part of uh, the world's Congress stuff. And she has been fierce in her work for the indigenous community. In the interview with Cultural Survival, Sambalingi talks about the different issues surrounding the community, but specifically the issues of for the indigenous women. And she said... In general, indigenous women in many different parts of the world, including Indonesia especially, face multiple discriminations. As girls at home in the family and in the community, we are always treated like second-class citizens. The most challenging role for women is as an indigenous woman because when indigenous people's community face problems, women and children will suffer the most. Because of our domestic roles as a caregiver of the family, of the community, it puts so much additional burden on women. At the economic level, the position of indigenous women as caregivers, that's their political position. It gives them meaning. But once your land is taken away, the status as caregiver, then you lose that. Indigenous women are the keepers of traditional knowledge in seas and medicines. That gives a special role to indigenous women. They are respected because of that role. But when land and resources are taken away, they cannot make medicines anymore. They immediately become completely powerless. And that's where they have to go out and become workers. They still have to perform domestically as a caregiver, but they have to also work on the plantations. And then everything is measured by how much money you get from that company. It's always the women who will suffer the most. 
And she goes on to talk about why women need to be in leadership positions and how to do so. Here's a quote from a Reuters interview. Women leaders are essential to ensuring the protection of indigenous rights, she said, noting that Indonesia's 30% gender quota to increase women's representation in parliament is usually filled by the wives of wealthy men. And she went on saying, in the 80s and 90s, indigenous women stood at the front line against oppression and land grabbing, but it has become harder over the past years for women to engage. And she expanded on that in her interview with Cultural Survival. Uh, She says, we need to narrow the gaps starting at the community level and also at the organizational level. At the organizational level, we have protocols and procedures to ensure women will get into those positions. If we hire for a post, for example, women will not get it without affirmative action. As organizations, we have the privilege to have the protocols to pay attention to the specific needs of women. How do they get additional capacity building in terms of awareness raising? This is very important because as women coming from indigenous communities, at some point you already have the mindset that you are lower than men. You are in the inferior position. There's a feeling of inferiority that a man doesn't have. It's our cultural background that a woman, no matter how good she is, always thinks she can't afford or that she doesn't deserve. These are the things at the underlying emotional level, self-esteem, confidence, that we have to address first, and not many of the leaders and organizations have that understanding. Right. I feel like that's just speaking to the entire choir. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yeah. So with all that, she's been working nonstop to get resources and help for the community. In 2023, Amon was awarded the $2.25 million prize for social innovations. And the organization has been working to get the rights to 26 million hectares of territory or over 64 million acres across the Indonesian lands. And with that, they've been waiting for legislation for indigenous rights approval from the government, uh, which has not happened as of yet, from what I understand. This was April of 2023, unless I've read the wrong thing. And yeah, there's a conversation because right now there are so many uh, industries and companies taking over the land and and abusing it essentially for resources um, and more indigenous lands are being taken over and indigenous communities continue to face threats uh, physically and uh, emotionally, all that, and possible loss of property and land. Again, with these new threats, Amon has embraced the need for technology um, and the role it plays and has aided in providing services like internet access and cell phone access throughout the different indigenous communities, which is so important. I don't think we talk about that enough, about how access is needed, especially to communicate and all of these things, not knowing what's happening when big companies come through and try to take over. Oh, but with all that, she's clear on one thing, making sure those in power are in check. Uh, she told Context News this, people in powerful situations need to be controlled. If we don't, the powerful will eat everything. And I thought that was really a, a huge statement to be said because we see that, we see the results of that, we see the world burning because of <laughs> that, and we know that it is big companies and those in power who have allowed for this and not listening to people from the indigenous communities who understand the land way better than anyone else could. Absolutely. But yes, uh, as always, listeners, if you have any suggestions for this segment, any thoughts about this, uh, you can let us know. Our email is stuffmediamomstuff at iheartmedia.com. You can find us on Twitter at MomStuffPodcast or on Instagram and TikTok at Stuff I Never Told You. We do have a tea public store with merchandise and we do have a book that's coming out on August 29th. Uh, you can pre-order it at StuffYouShouldReadBooks.com. Thanks as always to our super producer, Christina, our executive producer, Maya, and our contributor, Joey. Thank you. And thanks to you for listening. Stuff I Never Told You is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, you can check out the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. 